espresso. The Mark Thompson Show. I did want to tell you about this Dominion lawsuit real quick. Uh, The Dominion lawsuit is something that looks as though it's filled with some of the most embarrassing information on Fox News and Fox News' agenda to uh, essentially call the election what it is uh, in their view, and that's stolen, right? So that was their view, that uh, somehow they can sling that and then they needed a they needed a logical A, B, C to it. And so they just hung this completely phony story about how the Dominion software was flipping top of ticket races from Trump votes to Biden votes. They just floated that and they felt like, no, let's just run with that. that sounds Public's good. buying that's pl- it. That's yeah. plausible. Sure. Yeah. And, and this is really, an, in the new America, you know, we all sort of silo our information and we just become cranked up about an issue without really knowing the facts. It, we were spoon-fed whatever at Fox News Channel and we move on. The new America permits that. In other words, no one's ever held to account. Maybe that would be a way to put it. And, and for that reason... Fox News just cranked it up and they hit it harder and they got Giuliani on, they got Mike Lindell on and they had Sidney Powell. They had all this rogues gallery of crazies, right? I mean, just fire breathing dragons of crazy. And Nothing says I trust the story like Mike Lindell and Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> I mean, those, you trot those guys out. I'm thinking, oh, this has got to be for real. I mean, it was good, but they they screamed it loud enough. So anyway, it leads law and disorder for the day. In the criminal justice system, the people... Pimps, addicts, thieves, bums, winos, girls who can't keep an address, and men who don't care... ...are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. A cop, a flatfoot, a bull, a dick, John Law, you're the fuzz, the heat, you're poison, you're trouble, you're bad news. These are their stories. Because on the eve of the trial and opening statements, the trial was abruptly delayed... It was to have started today. The high-stakes defamation trial against Fox News that Dominion was pursuing, supposed to begin today, abruptly delayed last night. In a stunning 11th-hour twist, this throws into question whether a settlement is in the works. The judge's statement didn't provide any explanations for the delay. And we find out so far anyway, in the light of day on this Monday, that there has been no deal. Wall Street Journal sources say they want a deal. Fox does. If they don't get a deal, as you know, you end up with all of their guys. I'm talking about the Sean Hannity's of the world. You'll have Maria Bartiromo, even Rupert Murdoch. You'll have them taking the stand. Tucker Carlson. Now, this I'll remind you, and for those who uh, may not have followed this so closely, won't be a televised trial. Yeah, it's Delaware, which is where all these corporations are incorporated. So there's a whole, you know, genius to that. It's all in Delaware, and these are very kind of old school rules that affect uh, both the corporations that go on in Delaware from a business standpoint, and in this case, that affect. Uh, court cases in Delaware. So the judge says no television, no recording devices of any kind. So you're not going to hear Sean Hannity admitting that these were lies. You're not going to hear Tucker Carlson admitting same or Maria Bartiromo. So the insanity and frankly, the humiliation that would accompany that we're not going to hear. Now it'll be in the court record. We'll have access to it, but we're not going to get those media moments. That's a huge win for Fox. But Delaware Superior Court Judge Eric Davis said today, just a few hours ago, that this delay in this Fox Dominion defamation suit is not unusual. He expects parties back on Tuesday to finish jury selection and start the trial. Quote, I made the decision to delay the start of the trial until tomorrow. It's a six-week trial. Things happen. This is not unusual. This does not seem unusual to me. So there's no reference to encouraging the parties to settle or any of that. There was a lot of speculation. As I said, the Wall Street Journal reported last night 
that Fox was pushing for a last-second deal to avoid the trial. That's the Wall Street Journal's owned by Rupert Murdoch, of course, right? Uh, the it's you know I just I'm going to just give you 60 seconds on this because I think it's sort of interesting and I'm maybe you'll agree the the question in these defamation trials is as we're aware and this was explained by David Katz and by David K Johnson and many of the regulars here you know you have to prove that there was a deliberate effort on the part of, in this case, Fox News Channel, to put out something that they knew was a lie. So that's why we're seeing so much in the way of these private communications, which clearly reflect that they did know it was a lie. They knew it was a totally bogus story about the election being stolen, about the software being faulty, about, you know, Hugo Chavez, and the, I mean, there's just the, these overblown tales of Dominion Software. It was real damage. I mean, let's face it. Dominion Software has been damaged. There's, I think it's indisputably the case. You know, their name, their brand has been damaged. But that's in the damage phase, right? They want $1.6 billion. Here would be the high ground for Fox. Look, we brought on Sidney Powell. We brought on Rudy Giuliani. We brought on... Mike Lindell, blah, 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 all the rest of them. I mean, they were serving them up like short order chefs, these people who are ready to, you know, sling the BS, right? And then, of course, the hosts, um, Lou Dobbs, for example. I mean, these guys who are just, you know, these, uh, just, they're like um, fastball pitchers of BS. Uh, they regurgitate that information, right? They hear the guests say something and they regurgitate it. Regurgitate it would be a ding word. So regurgitate, not regurgitate it. So just ding and regurgitate for the record. But I do want to be clear that it's probably their only high ground. Uh, in other words, we have these guests on, we can't be responsible for what they, what they say. We're not saying it. They're saying it. The reality is, mm -hmm. nope. I would they, say. They did the messages. They knew it was a lie. They knew it. So they put these people on the air knowingly and they realized that what they were going to spew was false before they and even got the out point. there. And mm -hmm. so your answer to that is no. You knew exactly what these people were going to say. And that's also reflected in private communications and off-the-air conversations that are on record recordings. We've heard them. So if that's your high ground, it's not high enough. I think, it would appear I think, that it would appear that Fox News has real serious legal exposure here. And the best thing that happened to Fox News is that they got this judge ruling so that you won't actually be able to see Sean Hannity or hear Sean Hannity talking about the fact that he knew these were lies. Go ahead, Kim. Sorry. Oh, I had something really smart to say. And that is, uh, liar, liar, your pants are on fire. <laughs> yeah, pretty much it. <laughs> You, sir, are a liar. Right. Well, that's true. Liar, yep. liar, yeah. your pants are on fire. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, meantime, in law and disorder news, that's going on, the Dominion suit. Tesla is refusing to comply with a subpoena in a racism probe. You know, there have been many, many uh, widely reported complaints and legal actions against Tesla. Racial minorities, women, disabled people, all of these things are uh, talked about uh, in this Tesla suit. They were sued in February of last year for running a racially segregated workplace. This is in Fremont, right? In the East Bay of uh, the right. San Francisco Bay Area. In a filing in Alameda Court, where the suit is pending, the department said Tesla had agreed to provide a knowledgeable staff member to discuss its practices, but then claimed no one was available and that yeah. the department was abusing its powers by obtaining a court subpoena for the information to begin with. Tesla has rebuffed the department's repeated efforts to obtain compliance with uncontroversial investigative discovery requests that are important tools for a government agency to investigate allegations of a workplace discrimination. That uh, the lawyer for the state said. So they're 
asking for a court order. And that court order uh, was issued. So that's what's going on in the Tesla case. It seems to me, apparently, there we reported this, you know, the what was get, coming out of that Tesla plant. It's a pretty ugly workplace. Uh, or so they say. I mean... That's what they... Uh, allegedly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the Tennessee Guardsman, this is a different Tennessee Guardsman, than the Tennessee Guardman who um, who leaked all the information. A 21-year-old Air National Guardsman out of Middle Tennessee is facing federal charges for allegedly submitting an employment application online to become, if you guessed, Hitman. What? Oh. Give yourself a ding, yes. The U.S. Department of Justice says Josiah Garcia of Hermitage needed money to support his family. He allegedly found a website online that was created for murder for hire services. My Garcia's, bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> he submitted an application <laughs> indicating that he was interested in obtaining employment as a hitman. He's accused of following up by submitting other identification documents and a resume saying he was an expert marksman and had been employed in the Air National Guard since July of 2021. An undercover agent with the FBI began communicating with Garcia, who agreed to kill someone. How much do you think he agreed to kill someone for, everyone? What do you think oh. the number was to pull the trigger to kill someone? I'm going to say five grand. Five grand is a winner. That's is it exactly really? That's how much. Yes. Uh, 5, I underguessed. Uh, I, I, wow. Yeah, $5,000. He that reportedly seems... met with the agent at a park in Hendersonville where he was arrested. That's kind of suspicious, Kim. How do you know that? Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I know the going rate, right, people. Well, Watch out. Well, well, Who is having that conversation? Apparently Kim is having that conversation at her place. That's the uh, Tennessee Guardman. Um, the Louisville bank shooter was apparently seeking counseling for depression and anxiety. His family was working him with him and working him through it, according to an Indiana-based lawyer who's friends with the shooter's father. That's about as much as they're comfortable sharing at this point, the guy said. But uh, in a statement, the family said that he had mental health challenges and they were actively addressing those challenges. I mean, it seems as though that's pretty obvious. Violence over the weekend was pretty brutal. Um, as you know, there was, uh, there were shootings. It seemed almost everywhere at graduation parties at a mall. There were 13 mass shootings over the weekend. Is that right? I mean, like, oh no, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. Meanwhile, the NRA had their meeting over the weekend and they were all there. It was a, uh, it was like the Hollywood squares of firearms. And in the center square was Donald Trump. Uh, it's kind of sick to watch them uh, look over all of their weapons while there's so much news being made of people being slaughtered, you know. But do you have a little bit of him, Albert? Can we run a little bit of um, of Trump? It was pretty, I watched a bunch of it. You could pretty much needle drop it. I mean, you can just turn it on anywhere and you can see kind of the message. And he digressed a lot into... You know, my poll numbers are really good. Everybody else is weak. I mean, there's a of lot course. of that. You know, the election was stolen, he said. Oh, God. Never been anything like this. He said, if he had said, um, if we had gotten uh, a Patreon membership for every time he had said there's never been anything like it, there would have, I mean, we would be having, I would say, like 20 to 25 There's more. never been anything like it's this. It's true. And he was saying it over and over, one way or the other. Go ahead. Sorry, Albert. We're going to save it for a long time to come. It's under siege, but we're going to save it. Oh, go about 30. Low. Yeah, go 30 kind of minutes in. Can you hear him? Like, oh, okay. Yeah, 30, 32 minutes in is when he starts in on, um, you know, if it's too low, the audio will. If it's too low, I could just find some clips on Twitter. Yeah. Um, 
I wonder yeah, if this it's is. It's low here. I'll, I'll grab a couple of clips With off Twitter. Yeah. And, uh, and I can't get this to sound any better, huh? Mm. No. Okay, never mind. You know, suddenly I think it's okay if I can't hear Trump. Just like the mere tone of his voice and them playing God Bless the USA behind him. Blah. Yeah. Um, that's his new his new walk-on music. You know? is, that, is that what it is? Yeah, exactly. God so. Bless the USA that I tried right. to destroy on January 6th. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, an ex capitol police officer is sentenced after sending messages to a January 6th rioter. He learned the rioter was speaking to the FBI, and all of a sudden he began pinging in with messages. He said, take down the part about being in the building. They are correctly investigating, and everyone who was in the building is going to be charged. Just looking out. He was trying to warn one of the J6 rioters that he was going to be picked up. J6 rioter, he was warning, was a guy named Jacob Hiles. He's a boat captain that he knew from Facebook. He said, he reached out to him on Facebook, he said, I'm a Capitol Police officer who agrees with your political stance. And then he said that other part about taking down the, the part about being in the building. So he was convicted for deleting the messages with Hiles after he found out that Hiles had been speaking with the FBI. You know, they do this to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it for. Yeah, how about that? Pretty, um... The judge, Judge Amy Berman Jackson, who handed down Riley's sentence, said it was shocking conduct for any member of law enforcement and was even worse for someone who served the Capitol on, uh, served at the Capitol on January 6th. Riley apologized in court, said that he'd lost a lot of friendships over his actions. The burden is overwhelming, he said. The actions of January 6th have no place in our society. So he called his actions stupid and reckless. A lot of people are finding God on this, but then you find that they walk it back as they become celebrated on the campaign tours and all the rest it's kind of wild the transformation from courtroom right to you know living room so that's law and disorder for today tune in again next time for more law and disorder on the mark thompson show all right that's it let's roll hey let's be careful out there still to come i've got hi it's mark and i thought that was great hit the notification bell you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped and please subscribe to our channel to help us Save the universe.